Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem, postmortem of my Blitz game number 356, where uh, I was black and my opponent played e4 and I decided to go for a dragon Sicilian. So um, we get the normal moves here and play with the d6. You can also get into the dragon from the knight of six lines, but uh, this is the way, this is the most common way to play it these days when you're playing the dragon. He goes d4, takes, knight takes. And knight to f6, encouraging the other knight to come out to c3, blocking the c-pawn. And now g6, the dragon formation. And my opponent plays bishop e2, the second choice here, after bishop e3 going for the English system, or the uh, Yugoslav attack, I'm sorry. You call it the Yugoslav attack in the dragon. <laughs> anyway, bishop e2 is uh, usually uh, a preliminary to setting up more of a quiet uh, positional system with uh, kingside castling. Um, whereas the Yugoslav attack is uh, setting up for queenside castling. So um, anyway, after bishop g7, my opponent plays f3. And so this combination is just very rarely seen, bishop e2 and um, f3. The pawn blocks the bishop, and this f3 move is usually played so that the bishop can sit here on e3 without being harassed by the knight and setting up the Yugoslav attack with the queen on d2 and castling queenside. And we'll see that that's uh, what my opponent's intent is. He goes in for that kind of setup, but with the bishop on e2 instead of back here on uh, f1 or out to um, out to c4, which is where it is usually played when the bishop is moved at all. So I castle, and my opponent plays bishop e3. Knight c6, queen d2, a6. So I just want to uh, prepare. It looks like he's getting ready to castle a queen side, so it looks like I want to be able to uh, push the pawns <coughs> and uh, get some counterplay going. Um, and also it, it protects some of these squares. So for example, I could play queen c7 without having a knight jump into that square. So kind of a dual purpose move, this a6. Uh, he castled queen side, as I expected. And now I decided... Um, this is not uh, something you have to play, but it's just one way you can play. You can take off this knight and develop the bishop to e6, um, and it puts immediate pressure on the queen side. So when your opponent is castled on queen side, it's something to think about. And it sort of uh, reduces his attacking forces. I've had uh, problems in the past where uh, white just launches this uh, pawn roller uh, against my uh, king here, and, uh, and you've got to play pretty quickly to, uh, to slow that down. It gets, gets very sharp. So knight takes d4, taking a little bit of force off and getting my bishop out to a good post on e6 where it's not harassed by the knight and uh, immediately looks at the king side there. So already I have ideas of maybe um, bringing a rick over here and sacrificing the exchange, grabbing a pawn and bringing my queen out. If I can amain, arrange all of that, uh, I'd be in good shape, of course. Uh, it takes more than one move. So can be one, a very sensible precautionary move. I go on with b5, maybe... Um, with the idea of uh, harassing this knight a bit. And he takes on f6. So bishop takes f6, a very rare move, and in fact, uh, not good. So you see this uh, gives away white's advantage. Starting here, up to this point, white has had quite a good game. In spite of this uh, maybe a bit unusual move, bishop e2. Um, you no, know, the engine likes uh, white a lot here, and white should probably just continue with the normal uh, kingside attack and not not exchange off any of my pieces until necessary. And in particular, this bishop, uh, it's probably good to keep this bishop around at least until my bishop is exchanged off on the dark squares. Otherwise, there may be a problem, a dark square calamity. Anyway, so he took, and I took. But, you know, it's not like a fatal mistake. It just uh, gives up an, an advantage that white had before that point. Knight to d5. I guess this was his idea, getting the knight in with the tempo. I don't want to trade back, so I just drop my bishop back. I don't want to... I don't want to give up the bishop here for uh, no compensation, and uh, also it would mess up my pawns if he took there. So dropping it back, he does get a tempo, and now he gets to start pushing his uh, pawn. So he came out of that exchange okay. The engine has uh, decided once again that uh, white has the advantage here. So um, I push on with h6. Um, yeah, okay, didn't, didn't mind that too much. He goes knight f4. Pretty logical move, putting pressure on this g6 pawn, which I just weakened by playing h6. My idea with h6, by the way, is if he plays h5, I want to be able to play g5 and not uh, not exchange any pieces there, but just have the pawns uh, walk past each other and try and keep the lines closed on the king side. Okay, knight f4, I go uh, queen d7. 
He plays g4, continuing with his pawn side advance. And now I have to sort of sit here and wait. Um, if I push any pawn, he can take it. Whereas if he pushes a pawn, I can move past. So I'm just waiting for him to push here. And in the meantime, I can start pushing. And it looks like, uh, yeah, b4 is a recommended move by the uh, chess engine. I played rook a to c8 first, uh, putting a little pressure on the c file. Okay, not, not too bad. Knight takes e6. He grabbed the bishop here. I didn't see any good way to save that bishop. I didn't especially want to give up the bishop pair, but uh, it does get rid of one of his attacking pieces. And uh, so it, it gave its life in a good cause. <laughs> and uh, we have opposite colored bishops, which can be drawish in an end game, but in the middle game like this, it uh, can be quite dangerous because uh, white has extra strength on the light squares and I have extra strength on the dark squares. So whichever, whichever side is attacking has the advantage. So... My opponent played queen to d5, trying to trade off queens. And um, I decided to avoid that and play queen f6. It looks like either move would have been okay, but I'm trying to keep the queens on and still keep up some attacking pressure. Queen to b3 was played, defending. And now rook to c5, developing my rook, maybe doubling on the c file is an idea. Bishop to d3. So it's interesting, it didn't like bishop to d3 here. Oh, because I can take uh, f3. Yeah, so he gave up a pawn here for no particular reason. So we back up. I only had a very slight advantage at this point. So I think uh, it's been really a pretty well-played game. Minor minor inaccuracies here and there, but no, no mistakes until uh, bishop d3. Then I can grab a pawn, and I'm probably better here, but it's always tricky. Um, when you grab these pawns in front of your king, um, it opens up files, so it's very uh, double-edged. I'm getting some material, but I have to make sure I can defend. He plays his d rook to f1, and I took on g4, grabbing a second pawn, and uh, then he puts his h rook on g1. So he's he relocated both of his rooks to the open files. And um, queen takes h4 or queen to h5. Queen to h5 maybe is a little safer, um, just defending the g pawn. I played my queen back to d7, forgetting for a second about the pin, my... Uh, my f pawn is pinned, so he can just grab the g pawn. <laughs> so I've given him back a pawn, and now it's uh, even once again. And he's got his uh, pieces in a very good spot. So if I had defended correctly, uh, I would be doing okay here with queen h5. But uh, the way it was played, uh, he gets the <clears throat> he gets back to even, and uh, he's got an interesting attack going, slight edge to white even. So I play e6, trying to blunt this uh, diagonal, and he dropped his rook back to g2. Okay, still in the range of even. King to h8, I want to unpin my bishop and be able to bring a rook over to defend it. He went uh, rook f to g1, and I played my rook to g8, defending the bishop. And now he goes rook to g4. I'm not quite sure what the purpose of that move was, maybe just defending some of his loose pawns, and uh, just uh, one of those strengthening moves. It didn't make any new threats or anything, so it gave me a little bit of time to think about what I could play, and I decide to keep pushing forward with my pawns. The engine doesn't like that, at least at first blush. It likes queen to d8. Let's see, d8 is this square here, so that would be putting the queen on a dark square, maybe looking at coming to f6, perhaps? I'm not quite sure. Um, okay, I played a5, and he lashed out with c4. I thought that was a bit of a mistake. Yeah, yeah, the engine, the engine doesn't like that either. So after that, I can play a4, and I do. Kick his queen to see where it goes. He drops back to c2, which is a good choice, it appears. And then I can grab this pawn. And he can take back, but he takes back with the bishop, and I've got a, a pin on the bishop. So some, some slight edge here. I go d5, though, apparently not the most accurate move. What is the move here? Queen to e7 is the move. Very interesting maneuver. I, I really don't know. Queen to e7 and queen to d8. I really don't quite understand the purpose <laughs> of these maneuvers, honestly. And then he has queen takes a4. I mean, I'm giving up this pawn. Well, let's play it out. Okay, say I went queen e7, and he grabbed the pawn. And then, okay, it's just to get to f6 again, which is, yeah, I had the queen there previously. It is a good square. Um, he can come back to defend with the queen. It says rook 4 to g2 is best. What is wrong with queen back? Is there a technical issue here? Now, oh, now rook takes c4. This pawn, this bishop is undefended because the queen has to. Uh, the queen is overloaded doing two jobs. So queen to c2 is not possible. Rook to g2. 
and now um, queen takes h4 as possible. Okay, interesting play, and I stay a pawn up, I guess, is the point. So I was um, thinking I, I was possibly winning this bishop because I'm attacking a pinned piece. But he has some uh, pretty clever maneuvers he can do here. He starts with queen g2, and uh, he's just threatening to win my bishop. So I threaten his bishop, he threatens mine, and his, his threat looks a little more dangerous, actually. So I played uh, f5, hitting his rook, which is uh, uh, top choice of the engine. He takes... I take back, and then uh, he should play rook g6 here, just getting his rook out of take and maintaining the threat on my bishop. I thought I would win here, so let's check this out. Rook g6. I guess the problem is he's threatening, threatening checkmate. <laughs> well, it's not checkmate. If, if I let him take here, it's check, and then uh, if I take, I have to take back with the, uh, with the uh, bishop, and then it's queen here, checkmate, so it's threatening a mate in two. Okay, so that's pretty dangerous. So I have to defend that. I don't have time to take the bishop. Queen here, defending the bishop, defending the pawn indirectly, because now the bishop can take back, and the rook is defended, so there's no mate. Um, and then he has time to relocate his bishop, bishop to d3. And a very interesting game would continue, which the chess engine rates as completely even. <laughs> so interesting tactics there. Um, he played instead, rook takes uh, g7. Either he miscounted or he... He uh, didn't see a way out. I mean, I am attacking two pieces. And it, this rook g6 uh, resource is uh, maybe a little bit hard to find. A very interesting way to play. Rook takes g7. was played. I take back. And um, someone commented I should probably take back with the queen. Uh, really, they're about even. And I've let the engine run for a while. And uh, sometimes it prefers the rook. Sometimes it prefers the queen. But basically, I'm just uh, a rook up at this point. And uh, so that's how the game ended. My opponent resigned at this point. So interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.